This is an introduction to and an advertisement for a video series that I'm going to do, really a, a course that I'm putting together. And I'm going to call it Motivated Analysis, I think, or Topics and Analysis Through Applications. Let me tell you the idea briefly. There's two kinds of classes usually in college mathematics curricula. There's application-oriented courses that are often taken by non-majors that are more technique-based and uh, are more, more about specifics, about calculation, not very abstract, not very general, and not very rigorous. And then there's math major oriented courses that are more abstract, general, and rigorous. And I want to bridge the gap between the two. And in particular, I want to go from the applications and calculations to the generality, the abstraction, and the rigor. And I want, I want to make sure to show why you would need to do things rigorously, or why would you be motivated to introduce a new abstraction or to do something in more generality. Uh, those moves are not usually well motivated in the theoretical mathematics classes, and that's a frustration that I have as a, as a teacher of mathematics. Um, so it's going to be going, I want to show how we go from a practical problem of like heat flow, for example, to uh, calculational methods that are powerful, but limited unless we go to more generality, and then we need the rigor to make sure that we really are actually going to get the right answer when we do that. Um, so one ex aspect of that, for example, is showing realistic counterexamples, not toy counterexamples like you often see in abstract mathematics classes. Counterexamples uh, meaning complicated phenomena, complicated situations where you really do have to be careful to be rigorous or you will just simply get the wrong answer or you won't even think you can even get an answer. So examples like shock waves in a, um, aerodynamics and uh, ir extremely erratic functions like the stock market. Um, these are things that go beyond the bounds of the simplest techniques you could d develop. In an applications course, they're often you often just kind of hope that the techniques work and in a rigorous course, you don't necessarily see these things until later on. So I want to I want to focus on things like that sometimes. So uh, speaking of focus, the two topics I'm going to spend the most time on, most likely, are two great, wonderful, sexy topics: distributions, uh, in the sense of generalized functions. For example, the delta function, the idea of an infinite spike with infinite height, zero width, and area one. Um, it's a very practical tool. It was invented by Paul Dirac, a physicist. But to make sh to make uh, rigorous what the heck this is and what you can and cannot actually do with it, um, it takes us right into the heart of the modern way of thinking about functions. Similarly, Fourier series and Fourier transforms, which are intimately connected to distributions as well, um, the idea of representing functions as sums of simple building blocks is a super powerful technique. It's immensely practical. Um, so many engineers just build their lives around Fourier analysis, but it's also an excellent introduction to modern analysis because if you really analyze it carefully and you look at what can go wrong um, and what is the full power of the theory, you really do need uh, some abstraction and generality and rigor. Um, so if these are two topics that you've heard about, um, and don't feel like you're a master of, especially if you're not a master of the theory behind these, this course is aimed at you. Those will lead to, those two spe uh, specific topics, they're pretty broad in themselves, but they lead to more general notions. For example, uh, Fourier series, Fourier transforms, distributions, they're all example of spaces of functions, um, the, the things that are studied in functional analysis. And the idea, this is a very general idea of what does it mean to take a limit of a sequence of functions or an infinite sum of functions, super powerful. And the big technical tool that we often need for um, doing this is integration, but an integration theory that really, really works well, better than Riemann integrals, which you learn in, say, BC calculus, and that's Lebesgue integration. So we're going to hopefully have this as a nice backdoor into why would you redevelop the foundations of the theory of integration and invent Lebesgue integration, because it was, in fact, invented largely to understand the full power of Fourier's ideas. So some background ideas that often you would spend a lot of time in a theoretical class working on in a very abstract way, disconnected from examples, before getting to the connection with the sexy stuff. Um, 
I hope to develop these as needed, so again, kind of backwards from the usual way, um, motivated by applications. We'll see how well it works. Um, so things like the basics of topology, that's the topology study and analysis, which is a little bit different from the flavor of topology that you hear about, like with donuts and coffee cups and things like that, but it's, it's certainly the same subject at heart. So notions of convergence and continuity, um, notions of open and closed sets, compact set spaces, complete spaces. Um, these are things that are studied in an intro analysis class, and I want to show how you need to eventually come up against these notions and comprehend these notions if you want to do the sexy stuff correctly. And at the heart of it all is often the foundational properties of real numbers. So hopefully we'll see, um, have a good intro as to why we need to understand that better. That was another thing in the 19th century that people found they really need to understand much better um, than they did in order to really understand functions. So some starting points, uh, practically speaking. Uh, I'm going to jump off from some very classic examples of linear, ordinary differential equations, springs and circuits, just like in, uh, say, the first couple chapters of Edwards and Penny, uh, a standard 200 level differential equations class. So this is going to be very, I hope, fairly um, intuitive stuff and certainly stuff that's going to be in the prerequisites. I'll talk about specific prerequisites in a couple slides. Um, and we'll jump off of that and see if we want to really analyze these in a powerful way. It leads us very quickly to the two main topics of distributions and, and uh, Fourier analysis. Also a great motivator is linear partial differential equations. The three big examples of those being the heat equation, describing heat flow, the wave equation, obviously describing waves, and Laplace's equation, describing many, many kinds of equilibrium phenomena. For example, steady state heat distributions. Again, not a bad background resource is Edwards and Penny, the later chapters of that. Um, some themes really quickly that are going to come through the whole thing. Um, linearity and uh, linear algebra and sort of the geometry of linear spaces, the idea of summing up pieces to create something more complicated. Approximation and convergence, approximating a complicated object like this gray curve by simple nice objects like these colored curves. The idea of idealization, which is related to approximation, um, but here we have something we know exists, the gray curve, but it's kind of ugly, and we, we approximate it by simple objects. Idealization is almost the opposite. This is a, an, an example, this picture is an example of something that looks kind of like uh, what the, delta, the Dirac delta function would look like, a spike of infinite height, zero width, and area one. But this is a real honest-to-God function but it has this annoying little width to it and height that we have to keep track of. What if we could idealize that away and create the idealized spike that is infinitely tall, zero width, and yet has area one? How do we do that? So these are just kind of two sides of the same coin of the idea of approximation. Symmetry is a big idea. Here's something where we have a translational symmetry. We apply a translation from, to an object and scoot it over to a symmetrical copy of that um, just by moving it in the plane. Big, big theme in all the mathematics. So very practically prerequisites uh, if you're interested in doing this. Multivariable and vector calculus through Gauss, Green, and Stokes. Um, so the divergence theorem, Green's theorem, Stokes' theorem. Um, introductory linear algebra, including eigenvectors and eigenvalues. Orthogonality and projections, which not everybody gets to in a beginning semester course. And a little familiarity with abstract vector spaces would be helpful, but again, I'm trying to have the abstractions come from the practical mathematics, so you might want to try it even if you've never really looked at that. Basic ordinary differential equations, like the first two chapters of Edwards and Penny. Definitely some experience with proof. You, you're not going to, this is too advanced if you've never tried to write any kind of proof. Um, and very basic analysis, uh, basically epsilons and deltas and convergence of sequences and series. So if you have done calculus in a way where they actually where they didn't skip over in, in all the proofs then you'll be you should be okay but it might be I'm not sure how challenging it's going to be um, but you should have had some familiarity with with at least the idea of rigorous proof but you know you can start watching there's no there's no fee so it's okay um, it does help to have seen these three basic differential equations before in a very basic way but really, I'm just assuming it's as much as I show my multivariable calculus students. 
um, and some physics. Most of my motivating examples will come from physics um, and the physical side of engineering, let's say. So heat flow, wave motion, that kind of thing. Springs and springs and circuits, that kind of thing. Um, the style that I'm planning to do this in, um, I'm just starting it out. Um, and I'm looking for feedback, but uh, some, somewhat like I did the introduction to differential forms, I'm going to produce a lot of PDFs, and they're not going to, and they're going to be PDFs that I, I hope that people would work through before watching the videos and really kind of hit their heads against. So they're supposed to be uh, discovery worksheets, basically, of problems that are challenging, but you should be able to work through them and discover new mathematics on the way. And then I'll have videos that actually work through the PDFs, so basically answers to those. Um, worked solutions, then some things where I just need to lecture on uh, and introduce a new topic, and maybe some side threads like series of lectures on op optional topics if I feel like I really want to talk about something but um, I want to make sure it's, no, it's understood that that's not obligatory for the, the main thrust of the course. So uh, I'm interested in feedback already, even though I haven't put anything else up um, hardly besides this. Um, oh, and one more thing in terms of style, the PDFs. Um, I'm going to probably be hosting those on my blog, I think, at this point. Uh, and I'll just I'll continue uh, to, so look at that for the PDFs. And there's not, I haven't posted a single one yet because I'm looking for the feedback first, but um, they'll be coming up very soon. So uh, if you could give me a like or a comment if you're interested, and if you have some ideas of like what would you really be excited by um, then I'd be really happy to have that feedback and this is going to be a work in progress for some time to come it's going to come out pretty slowly because I've got other real work to do but uh, I'm excited to do this and I'm interested to see if people are as excited as I am thanks